A warm welcome to all of you friends of Emmanuel, St. James, Sudan Baptist, St. Paul's, and St. Martin's. A warm welcome to all of you who join us this evening as we give thanks, sing praises, and offer our prayers to our ever-present and loving God. A warm welcome to you all this evening. We begin with our opening prayer. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. So we lift our hearts up to you, God, in praise and thanksgiving. As we count our blessings and acknowledge your goodness, our hearts go out to those who do not have and who are in need. We thank you for plentiful harvests and full refrigerators, and we ask that you supply the needs of those who are hungry. We thank you, God, for jobs that provide for our families and supply the needs of our society. And we pray that you would care for those who have no work or the dignity and purpose it brings. We thank you, God, for opportunities and choices, for meaning and challenges. And we pray that you, God, would give a sense of purpose to those who feel trapped. We thank you for family and friends who love us and care for us. And we pray that you, God, would befriend those who are alone. The abundance of the harvest is a symbol of the abundance of your love in our lives. We live in a spirit of gratitude to you and generosity to our neighbor. Loving God, in this season and all year long, give to us the gift of a thankful heart so that we may acknowledge you as the giver of all that is good in our lives. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Our gathering hymn that we will sing together, praise to the Lord, the Almighty, verses 1 and 4.
reading from Psalm 104, verses 1 through 25. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment, the waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they flee. At the sound of your thunder they take to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys, they flow between the hills. Give drink to every wild animal, the wild asses quench their thirst. By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitation, they sing among the branches. From your lofty abode you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle and the plants for the people to use to bring forth food from the earth. And wine to gladden the human heart, oil to make the face shine, and bread to strengthen the human heart. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. In them the birds build their nests. The stork has its home in the fir trees. The high mountains are for wild goats. The rocks are a refuge for the conies. You have made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows its time for setting. You make darkness and it is night. And when all the animals of the forest come to creep out, the lion young roar with their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they withdraw and lie down in their dens. People go out to their work and their labor until evening. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there. Living things both small and great. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I'll continue reading from Psalm 104, starting with verse 26 and down to verse 37. There the ships go to and fro, and the Leviathan which you form to frolic there. These all look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to, to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But may sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters, flowing up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill, and bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill, and have built fine houses and live in them. And when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, 
and all that you have is multiplied. Do not exalt yourself forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you into the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you and to test you and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth and to he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. Next reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter, verses 24 to 30 and 36 to 43. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore again, grain. Then the weeds appeared as well, and the slaves and the shareholders came and said to them, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. And the disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will be thrown, throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen.
reading from the Gospel of Luke, the 12th chapter. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to the span of your life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in, in all his glory was not clothed like the one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more? Will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things. And your father knows that you, your father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom. And all these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you, my siblings in Christ. Grace and peace to you. Amen. I want to start by saying thank you. Thank you to my colleagues in ministry who have gathered to record this worship, worship service for our communities. And thank you, all of you that are tuning in and joining us in scripture and praise as we remind ourselves of all that we have to be thankful for. Yes, even in this very unprecedented year of 2020. Do not worry. A lot easier said than done for sure. In the gospel reading from Luke that we just heard, Jesus says, do not worry. Well, I don't know about you, but if I want something to worry about these days, all I have to do is turn on the radio, open the newspaper, or watch the news. How can we not worry when our loved ones have become a COVID-19 death statistic? or we have had to call off our Thanksgiving family gatherings? How can we not worry when the world in which we live today feels like it's falling apart at the seams? My worries are different than your worries, yes, but we all still worry. And the list of what we could and do worry about really is endless. So how do we come to this text on worry, on this Thanksgiving in which we are about to celebrate? Well, you see, God does tell us not to worry. But then he goes on to remind us that even the birds of the air and the lilies of the field are fed and clothed because God gives us all that we need. So when we worry this Thanksgiving week, when we let our anxieties take over our thoughts, when we feel weighed down by the enormous stress and the state of the world, we can be reminded that God's got this. God has you and God has me in his arms, loving us, leading us, and teaching us that when our eyes and our hearts and our minds are fixed on the Lord, we truly have nothing to worry about. So friends, let's count our blessings. Let's remember all that we have to be grateful for. And let's give thanks to the Lord our God for all that he has given us, ourselves, our time, our possessions, 
which are all signs of God's gracious and everlasting love. Thanks be to God. I would like to encourage all of you to finish out this Thanksgiving month by ending each day listing three things that you are thankful and grateful for in your life. If you do that every night for, let's say, the next six days, you will have quickly compiled a list of 18 people, places, things, experiences in your life in just six short days that bring you joy, gratitude, and thankfulness. What a great way to let that worry go and change your heart. Thanksgiving is indeed a time in which we set aside to count our blessings to live out that day with family and friends who have encouraged, supported, and uplifted us over the last year. This year will undoubtedly look different. However, that doesn't mean that our thankfulness and gratitude is lost. It hasn't been stolen, it's still there. We might have to dig a little deeper we may have to process things just a little bit harder, but in the end, we still have so much to be grateful for this Thanksgiving of 2020. So however it is that you spend your Thanksgiving day, may you find time to reflect, identify, and acknowledge that even in a year such as 2020, we can still be thankful. Even in a year such as this, we have so much to be grateful for. Even in the despair, death, illness, global pandemic, and division that surrounds us, we can look to our God, who is steadfast and faithful, and knows that our lives have been blessed and we continue to be sent, sent out into the world to share God's love, to care for our neighbors, and to live and love like Jesus. Thanks be to God.
Let us bow for a moment to give thanks for the offerings that will be sent in. Let us pray. O God, who desires good for all creatures, satisfy our hunger, not just for food, but for freedom, truth, justice, and love. O risen Christ, you reveal yourself to us as one who gives to the poor and cares for all people. We dedicate our lives and our offerings to your service. O Holy Spirit, bless these gifts and abide in our hearts, so that our gifts and our actions may live out our faith. Glorify God and bring forth a fruitful harvest for the kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. scripture reading, I'll be reading from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. I'll read the benediction. May we always walk gently upon the earth in right relationship, nurtured by your love, open to the wind of the Spirit, taking only what we need. 
always open to the needs of others, making choices that bring well-being, living with generosity, striving for justice, honoring with all reverence, reconciling and peacemaking, mindful of those who will come after, recognizing our proper place as part of your creation. Grant us the strength and courage, Lord, for such a radical transformation into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Happy Thanksgiving. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. Thank <clears throat> you.